Okay, so now let's actually look at the Hipparchus scale of brightness for some actual examples of stars, okay? So, um, you see here this one? Let's go back to that list uh, near stars. Remember the other day we were talking about the luminosity? These two columns are the Hipparchus scale, okay? Now, you have a separate Hipparchus scale brightness for absolute luminosity, and then you have a separate Hipparchus scale for apparent luminosity. You see here? Absolute visual magnitude is how bright the star actually is. Apparent visual magnitude is how bright it appears to us, okay? So let's first look at this. How bright the star actually is. What does the sun get? Okay, the sun no longer gets a special place on this scale. Remember, on this scale, the sun had a 1, and everything was compared to the sun. But on the Hipparchus scale, the sun just gets a 4.85, okay? So the sun is basically right around here. You see? Proxima Centauri, 15.53. So Proxima Centauri is all the way, all the way over here. Does that mean it's brighter than us or dimmer? Dimmer. By about how many times dimmer? If this is a 5 and this is a 15, 5, 10, every 10 is uh, 10,000, right? 10,000, 10,000 times dimmer. As a matter of fact, if you look at over here, it tells you how many times dimmer. 8.2 times 10 to the minus 4, that's 8.2 10, uh, 10 thousandth. So this and this kind of agree with each other. They have to agree, you see? Then if you look at this one, 4.38, Alpha Centauri A. Alpha Centauri A, 4.38. Is it brighter than us or dimmer? Brighter? Oh, we, we, we said that the other day. You see, 1.77 times brighter. You see? Then this one is dimmer than us. You see, it's dimmer, half times dimmer. 13, dimmer, 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 dimmer. Oh, this one, brighter. You see, Sirius A. Sirius A is right here. See that? Oh, and it's true, 26 times brighter, you see? And then you can keep going down. There was another one that was brighter, I think, uh, way down. So now you can clearly understand what those columns mean. And then you uh, see this one here, 7.73, 2.66. And that was <coughs> Procyon A. Okay, now, apparent visual magnitude is how bright the star appears to us. So if we, we have to do another scale for that one. Negative 5, 0, 5, 10, 15. Negative 10, negative 15 and then all, all the way here, negative 20. What does the sun get on that scale? Well, why? Because we're only one AU away from the sun, right? So on the, on, uh, on the scale of how bright the star appears, the sun completely dominates every other star. So it's way, it's way off the scale all the way there, negative 26. Okay, uh, 11, how bright the star appears to us, negative 0.01. Oh, that's actually pretty good. It appears pretty bright. It's so, this is Alpha Centauri A. 1.34, Alpha Centauri B. 9, 13, 7, 12, so on, so on. Negative 1, ooh, Sirius A. You see, so this is, this is how bright the star appears. This is how bright the star actually is. So the sun is way, way, way over here. I'm going to go like that, go like that. See that? Sun, psh, all the way on that side of the scale. So 
the Sirius A is the most negative. You see your negative one? There's nothing else like that. Okay, if you go to the other uh, scale, or the, the other chart, okay, same thing. There's also two columns, absolute visual magnitude, Sirius A, okay, same one. <coughs> okay, how about Canopus? Canopus, negative 5.53. You see, this is Canopus right here. Brighter than the sun. See, where's the sun? Here. Oh, yeah, brighter than the sun. Zero, negative 5. And how many times brighter? 14,000. You see? Uh, negative 0.3, 4. Point, uh, point, uh, five eight. So you basically see the same pattern. Negative six, you see, regal, negative six, all the way over here. So on this scale, regal would be here, all the way there. You see that? And you can keep going. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's another one here. Uh, let's see, which one is that? Negative 8.73. Deneb, you see, negative 8.73. Deneb, negative 8, and negative 3, and so on. So this is about the most negative you can you have, okay, on this scale. But then if you go to this scale, apparent visual magnitude, uh, back to series A, negative 1, negative 0 0.6, negative 0 0.05, negative uh, po positive, positive. One of the things you'll notice is that the way that they ordered this list is neg the most negative apparent magnitude, then a little bit less negative, a little bit less negative, a little bit less, more positive, more positive, more positive. That's the way that this list is ordered. So what does that mean? The brightest looking star in the sky is Sirius A. It's a negative one. You see here? Negative one. Besides the sun, Sirius is the most negative. Then you get the next brightest looking star, negative 0.62. Then the next one, negative 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.03. So you see here? Over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. And then you can keep going until you get to 1.36. Basically, 1.36 right here. These are stars. Do you need telescope to see them? No. Of course, from LA, you might not be able to see them because of the city lights and stuff. But if you go to the desert, you'll be able to see any star up to positive 1 very easily. Okay. One of the things you'll see in the lecture notes is that as you get this way, it becomes harder, harder to see it. When you get to a positive six, anything beyond that, you need telescope. If you go to the desert, you'll probably be able to see a three or four very easily, but you're gonna, you're gonna have a tougher time seeing a six. Okay, so. So some actual examples, we already mentioned the sun gets a 4.83, Proxima Centauri 15.45, 10,000 times dimmer than our sun, Sirius A positive 1.45, it is the brightest star in our neighborhood of stars, right? It's the least, it's the closest to zero on the absolute luminosity scale, you see? Betelgeuse, negative 5.14. It's more than 10,000 times brighter than our sun. Deneb, negative 8.73. This is the most negative, and therefore, it is the brightest star among the ones we see. Okay? Deneb, negative 8.73. So we could also show some slide like this. See here? Nearest the stars, brightest stars. And what they're doing here is that they are 
plotting them on what's known as the HR diagram. You're going to learn about the HR diagram later in this lecture. So you see on the nearest the stars, absolute visual magnitude, the, the more negative you get, the brighter. You see the negatives are on the top. The more positive, the dimmer. So Sirius A is the highest up. It's the 1.45, you see, from our neighborhood. Then you got Altair, Procyane, Alpha Centauri. The sun is here. The sun gets a 4.83, you see. And then you got the red dwarfs. The red dwarfs are dimmer. And then you got a, some bunch of white dwarfs. White dwarfs go over here on the HR diagram. Among the brightest stars, the sun is way down here. This is absolute uh, luminosity, not apparent. See, absolute. The sun is way down. All these stars are brighter than the sun. So Altair, Procyon, Arcturus, Aldebaran, Enter, Canopus, Betelgeuse. You see, Betelgeuse is a negative five. Beta Centauri, Spica, Regal, Deneb are kind of about even. <coughs> so um, actually, Deneb should be a little bit higher probably right about here, negative, so negative 8.73, almost close to nine, you see, like that. So the higher up, the more negative, the brighter the star. But then you have another uh, scale for apparent luminosity. Okay. Hipparchus scale for apparent luminosity. Our sun is negative 26 off the charts, as I said before. Full moon. Okay, so here's one of the things. For planets and moons, we could also give them apparent luminosity because of albedo. But we can't give them absolute luminosity. Okay, they're, they're not on this scale. But if a moon reflects the sunlight and the planet reflects sunlight, we can see the planet and we can say, how bright does that planet appear to us? So we can put it on the apparent luminosity scale, you see? So full moon is very, very bright object in the sky, negative 13 on that scale. You see here? Full moon. I like to look at it kind of like this way, horizontal. As a matter of fact, this chart is a little easier to read. Yeah, this one, I like this one. I see, so sun, negative 26, full moon, negative 13. And then we can begin putting other objects. We see that Venus is the brightest looking object in the sky besides the full moon, you see? Venus, um, especially at, uh, when it's close to us, it's a negative four, very, very bright. Brightest objects besides the moon and the sun, you see? That's why it's the morning star, evening star. That's why women are from there, all that good stuff. Um, Mars and Jupiter, when they're close to us too, they could be pretty bright. Uh, <coughs> so I put that here on the chart. Uh, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter. And then after that, um, Mercury is probably pretty dim. Uh, Saturn, uh, pretty dim. Especially Uranus and Neptune, you need a telescope to see them. So they're going to be, Uranus and Neptune are going to be all, all the way here. You're gonna, uh, they're going to be beyond the naked eye limit, you see? So on that scale, Sirius A is a negative 1.44. You see, Sirius A appears twice. So it's the brightest star in our neighborhood. It's also the brightest looking star in the sky, period, bar none, you see? So Sirius A would go right here. Sirius A. Okay, I'm pretty serious about that. Okay, then as you go more this way, you get a little, little dimmer. You see, so Alpha Centauri A, these are some examples. Negative 0.01, Deneb 1.25, Betelgeuse 0.45. All of these you can see on a good clear night. You don't need any telescopes. Polaris, which is our north star, is a positive two. 
So it's not very bright looking, but if it's a good clear day, you should be able to see it at the end of the little dipper, right? So you shouldn't, you shouldn't miss that. You see here, Polaris, Pol Polaris. Now, as you get more to the right of Polaris, it's going to be harder and harder to see that star this way, you see? Naked eye limit, positive 6. So if anything is rated as a positive, maybe positive 4, 5, I would say if anything's rated a positive 4, a positive 5, or positive 6, and you want to see it without telescope, go out to Palm Springs or some desert. You can see it maybe, okay? Positive 4, positive 5, positive 6. And then if you want to see anything dimmer than a positive 6, buy a telescope or a binoculars intended for uh, viewing, okay? So anything dimmer than a positive six requires binoculars or telescope. Limit for a six inch telescope, remember uh, back when we were talking about telescopes, I suggested you might wanna consider buying a six inch telescope if you ever buy a telescope. You can see up to a positive 13, you see here, Positive 13 means six inch telescope. So there's a whole host of stuff here that you couldn't see that it's gonna enable you to see, you see? Yeah, same thing you could say, for, for example, if Polaris was a, a two, right, positive two, good question. If something else was rated a positive seven, that means it appears 100 times dimmer than Polaris. Yeah, 100 times dimmer, you see? 100 times dimmer. So that's why you're gonna need the telescope to see it. Because Polaris, you can kind of barely see. Anything 100 times dimmer than that, well, you, you don't, you have, you're out of luck. You see? And then if anything is a positive 12, 100 times dimmer than that, positive 17, 100 times dimmer than that. So the same rule will work, yeah. Okay, the Hubble Space Telescope, which has been giving us all these perfect images, look how far into space you can see. You can see something as dim as rated 28 on this scale. So pretty much roll all the way here. Hubble Space Telescope, you see here? See where it says Hubble Space Telescope? So all these stuff that you could not see, you can go online, look at the images of the Hubble, and it gives you all those images, perfect. Amazing stuff that we can see that dim. That means we're seeing stuff in other galaxies. We're seeing stuff in other superclusters of galaxies using the Hubble Space Telescope. 